Hello everyone, welcome back. This is Daisy. I have been having many requests to do a class or tutorial of how to do sublimation. So today we're going to be converting an Epson EcoTank printer into a sublimation printer. First, we're going to talk about printers that can or cannot be used for sublimation. For example, HP and Canon printers use heat while printing. Therefore, they will not work for sublimation. But the good news is most of the Epson EcoTank printers can be converted into sublimation printers. I'm going to leave you a list of the most affordable EcoTank printers that can be converted into sublimation printers. Look for that list in the video description or in the comments below. And this is the list of the basic materials that you are going to need to start a sublimation business. Any affordable Epson EcoTank printer. Sublimation ink. I am using Hippo Sublimation ink. They kindly send these ones to me and I am very happy and thankful with the results. Hippo Sublimation ink is very affordable and most of all, very good quality ink. You will see at the end how vivid and bright the colors will look in the final product. I'm going to leave the link in the description below so you can check it out. Sublimation paper, a heat press or an easy press from Cricut, a sublimation mat, or if you have the Cricut mat, you may use that one too. Protective paper or butcher paper, heat resistant tape, and sublimation blanks. Best fabrics for sublimation printings are polyester and polyblends. Now, let's say you already got your printer. The printer comes with this ink. We are not going to use that ink. It's very important that we get good quality sublimation ink. And we're going to start filling up those tanks. But before we start with the process, I would like to invite you to subscribe to my channel and give it a thumbs up. Let's unbox it. It comes with a lot of ink, but we're not going to be using this ink. You can save it if you have a regular printer, or you may sell it. Let's carefully remove all the protective tape. And the printer to start sublimation has to be a new printer. After this, we're going to go ahead and inject the ink into the printer containers. I'm going to show you two easy ways to inject the sublimation ink into the printer tanks. So these ones are the containers. The biggest one is for the black one. We're going to make sure we put the right ink on the right containers. So the C is for the cyan, the M for the magenta, and the Y for the yellow. So let's open. Let's get the ink. As 
you can see it comes with the syringes so you can inject the ink into the printer containers. This time I'm going to be showing you two ways to do this process. The first one is going to be using the syringes. And for the second one, I'm going to be using one of the original Epson ink empty container. I like this second one because it's not messy and it's easy. Let's start. But before, I'm going to put on the gloves that come with the Hippo ink. Let's make sure the needle is tightened. Place the bottle into an angle when doing this process. Like this, you don't get air bubbles. I'm going to start with the first one, the black one. I'm going to close the other containers so I don't get confused. Insert the needle and start injecting the ink. And we're going to do the same process until the tank is full. Push it all the way down if you get air and start all over. As you can see, it's filling up. Let's continue this process until it's full. Now that it is already full, I'm going to wash off the syringe and save it for next time. And for the second way to do this process, I am going to be using one of the ink bottles that came with the printer. You may keep this ink if you have a regular printer or you may toss it. I'm saving it for another printer so we don't waste it. But if you don't have use for it, you can throw it away. So now we're going to go and wash this one with water. Dry it completely and transfer the sublimation ink into this bottle. So I already washed it and dry it. I removed the label so we don't get confused. So what we're going to do now is to transfer this ink into this empty bottle. We can use a funnel or we can just do it like this too. Thank you. 
we still have a little bit so we're going to save it we put the cup back on very tight so now let's make sure we were putting the cyan and now we go to the cyan container so now we're just going to align it over here and press it. Now do you hear that noise? It means it's already filling. You can see it's filling up. This way is easier because you can do it all at once. But again, you can pick the one that that is best for you. Okay, now it's already full. We take it out. Still, we still have a little. We can save it. And let's close it. And we're going to do the same process for the rest. Now that the tanks are full, I'm going to go to the next step. But before, I want to tell you something very important. This is when you're using the printer. Once the level of ink come to this line, make sure to refill with sublimation ink again. Please do not let the ink go below the last line. Otherwise, this might damage your printer. Now, let's go to the next step. Let's connect the power cord to the printer. Next, follow the manual instructions that comes with the printer. Lift up the control panel, turn it on, select your language, and follow the prompts. The first part of the setup process is going to take some time, 10 minutes approximately. So let's be patient and wait for the next step. Now we're going to adjust the printer. For that, we're going to need to load paper. This is regular paper, it's not sublimation paper. You just do adjust the printer and let's follow the prompt is asking us to check the printed pattern and select the closer result. In my case, it's the number one, so I'm going to press the number one, intermittent lines. The second printing is perfect. As you can see, no intermittent lines. So let's follow to the next step. On this one is asking to pick the straight lines. So it has two rows, number one and number two. I'm going to check the straight lines and select those. So here is another printing and it's asking to select the solid colors. 
Some of them have lines, so we don't need those. Let's look for the solid colors. This one have six rows, so we're going to pick one for each row and select those on the printer. And if it keeps printing, Keep on doing the same process until you finish aligning the printer. When the printer finished with the alignment, we're going to continue setting up the printer on the computer. Next, I'm going to install the printer software in my computer. You can find the link for the specific printer or a specific model in the manual instructions. Mine is the Epson 3760, so this is my link. Next, follow the instructions on the computer screen to run the setup program. So again, this site is for the Epson ET 3760. And we're going to download. Once it's here, press it and install. Say yes. Okay. So it's installing. Accept. Let's see if we need all of this. Install. So it might take some time. Let's go next. Confirming that the ink is already charged. Next. Wireless connection or if you want to use a USB connection. If your Wi-Fi is not as strong, I recommend you to use USB. But this one you might have to buy it separate because it doesn't come with the printer. Next. And here you're going to set it up for the first time. Next. Yes. Next. Now, print test page. Next. Next is going to ask you if you wish to register your printer with them. So it's going to ask you personal information. I'm going to skip this step and go to the next one. When the software installation and the printer setup is complete, let's go to the next level. In this step, I'm going to set up the printing preferences. Like this, I don't have to adjust them every time I print. Let's look for the folder, printers and scanners, and open it. Now, let's look for our printer. This one is the 3760. Press Manage. And we're going to press on Printing Preferences. On document size, we're going to select letter. On paper type, we're going to select premium presentation paper matte. And on quality, we want to press high. After this, let's go to more options and let's make sure we press mirror image. Like this, we're going to have all these settings ready every time we print, so we don't have to be changing. 
so press OK and ready. Now that it's ready for printing, let's print the first sublimation design. Let's go to printing and print. So now we're going to load the sublimation paper. I like this paper because of its quality and also this one has some letters on the back. You can easily identify which one is the front or the back. When loading the paper on the tray, make sure the letters go on the bottom. And when loading the bottom cassette, make sure the letters go on the top. But for this paper, you want to use the tray instead of the cassette. Look how beautiful the colors look. And after we press, it's going to look even better. Colors vivid and bright. Now let's go press it. So now we're going to sublimate this design into this t-shirt. This tee is 100% polyester. For sublimation, you need to work on fabrics that are mostly polyester. Something that is 75% and up works best. I am using my Easy Press from Cricut, but if you have a heat press, you may use it. Now, the temperature for sublimation depends on the material. This sublimation paper that I am using comes with the suggested transfer instructions. So I am following those for this fabric. I'm going to press it at 400 degrees for 40 seconds. I am using a sublimation mat. If you have the one from Cricut, you can use that one too. And to align the design, I like to fold the t-shirt in half, iron it, and then I fold the top like two inches below the collar and iron. Like that, I know where to center the design. I like to do the same with the paper. I fold in half and press on top and bottom. Don't fold on the design, just on top and bottom so you can align it. Before placing the design, we're going to use protective or butcher paper. Let's cut two pieces. This one have to be bigger than the design one is going to go inside the t-shirt and the other one on top of the design. We're going to secure the design on top of the t-shirt and for that we're going to use heat resistant tape. Now we're going to press the design, but before, let's place the other piece of protective or butcher paper on top of the design. I'm going to press at 400 degrees for 40 seconds. Now let's remove the paper and see what we got. 
Look how beautiful. Goodness, I love this. This is the ink that I use to get these beautiful, vibrant colors. Hippo Sublimation Ink. I'm going to leave the link in the video description or in the comments below. This is beautiful. You may use the same design to sublimate on fabric, mugs, tumblers, coasters, totes, bags, etc. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Next tutorial we're going to be talking about the Cricut Mug Press and how to use it. Also, we're going to be using the Cricut Mug Press for sublimation. Stay tuned. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for your visit and I'll see you in my next tutorial.